Chapter 13, The Laws of Magnetic Attraction. How are the star systems brought together to form hydrogen, gold, and the rest of the natural elements? By the first law of magnetic attraction. How does this law work? It brings together all star systems that are alike, causing them to find each other. So here's the question. Which clusters of star systems will have a stronger magnetic bond? Those with one planet or 100 planets? Those with 100 planets. There are more planets to form magnetic bonds, so they'll be held together more strongly. Not only that, but they'll be packed closer together. And thirdly, they'll be much heavier. Therefore, iron, gold, and the other heavy metals will sink into the new earth, while hydrogen, oxygen, and other gases will float on top forming water in the atmosphere. The gases are much lighter and loosely bonded due to the fewer number of planets, while the metals are much heavier, with stronger bonds due to the larger number of planets in their star systems, or atoms. And all this happens because of the first law of magnetic attraction, which attracts like to like. What about the second law? The second law of magnetic attraction attracts unlike to unlike. Star systems are also attracted to those unlike them, those having a different number of planets, and they form what are called molecules. A molecule is made of two or more star systems, and many molecules cluster together to form compounds. What is a water molecule? Them, it's hydrogen plus hydrogen plus oxygen, or H2O. Us, it is made of two star systems, each with one planet called hydrogen, being magnetically attracted to a third system with eight planets called oxygen. In how many different ways does the first law of magnetic attraction work? In exactly 100 different ways. It attracts all type one star systems together, and it attracts all type twos together, and so on until it attracts all type 100s together. That's exactly 100 different ways. That's why there are exactly 100 basic natural elements on Earth. They are listed in the periodic table of elements that can be found in any chemistry textbook. They start with hydrogen, one planet, followed by helium, two planets, all the way to fermium, 100 planets, or as they say, 100 electrons. The rest over 100 are artificial elements, either man-made or ephemeral natural combinations, i.e. temporary elements that disintegrate almost immediately as soon as they are exposed to the air and warm temperature. In how many ways does this second law work? In almost endless ways. That's why we have shoes, Coca-Cola, aspirin, iron oxide, water, and fake nails, all made from the basic natural elements combining in one way or another. Now here's a question that has been asked before. In a new universe, if all the stars of the previous universe are used as atoms to form the first Earth, how are all the new stars around it formed? Where does the material come from to form all the new stars? We have talked about the clustering together of the 100 different types of solar systems attracted like to like by means of the first law of magnetic attraction. They form the 100 basic natural elements found on Earth. The first of these is hydrogen, formed by all star systems having one planet and its sun. The last is fermium, bonded much more strongly and so much heavier that when the Earth is formed, these clusters of 100 planet systems will sink into the Earth, burying themselves deep in the crust after the Earth has cooled over billions of years. Indeed, it takes billions of years for the Earth to form. It takes trillions upon trillions more for the universe to be filled with new stars that form around the first Earth and fill space up to a distance of 16 trillion trillion miles across. Where do these new stars come from? All the stars of the previous universe are used to make only the first Earth, giving it its 125 billion trillion trillion atoms. And yet, the Earth has its sun and companion planets, not to mention the countless stars filling the sky. Here is their theory of where the stars come from. 
They, modern scientists, say a moment before the Big Bang, the whole universe was concentrated into a dense ball not bigger than a fist. They say the dense ball exploded with such great force that it formed all the stars and planets of the whole universe. That is the complete theory of the Big Bang. How many people believe it? How many of them do you think believe their own theory? Our ancestors tell a completely different story of how the sky is filled with new stars, thereby expanding the universe. They say the purpose of creation is for God to increase. God is infinite. So how can God increase if he's already infinite? Our teachers tell us that God is infinite only in eternity, but not in creation. One of the purposes of creation is to duplicate this infinity of God as it is known in eternity and bring it into the universe. Since infinity means unfinishable, creation will go on forever because the internal infinity of God cannot be duplicated into a final and finished form. Therefore, the universes will always expand. Every new universe will be larger than the one before without end. What does this mean in terms of new stars? It means new stars must be created out of nothing. If they are created out of something, as in the case of a dense ball exploding, there is no increase. If, if you start with a dense ball and explode it all over the place, you still have only the same amount of matter you started with. Increase only happens when new matter comes out of nothing, adding to what was already there. Therefore, according to our teachers, that is one of the reasons why the Big Bang Theory is a false, misguided concept. So how does matter come out of nothing? Chemistry, as we have explained it using modern concepts, only deals with three types of matter called gases, liquids, and solids. There are four other types of substances above these three, which modern chemistry does not include in its study. The total number of substances in the universe is seven. The first substance of the universe is magnetism, and it's created by condensation. Condensation of what? Condensation of the mind. God condenses part of his mind, which is in an expanded state, and forms the first substance, magnetism. Magnetism condenses further and forms the second substance called electricity. Electricity condenses into light, the third substance of the universe, which further condenses into the fourth substance called ether or space. The last three substances, gases, liquids, and solids, condense in three stages out of the ether. Those are the seven substances of the universe all coming out of nothing or the mind of God. You mentioned that some elements on the periodic table were man-made. I hope I didn't misinterpret that. If so, which ones? The elements 114 and 116 are synthetic elements or man-made. 114 is called un, -un quaternium and is made of blowing calcium on plutonium. Element 116 is called un unhexium and is made in a similar way using different elements. Their weird name should tell you right there that they are unnatural. Once they're made, they last for about 30 seconds before disappearing into nothingness. <laughs>